I'd like to begin this with a little bit of a caveat. Uh, my pronunciation of Tolkien's works kind of uh, sucks, but I'm not sure I really want to spend the better part of my afternoon reading about the minutia of the linguistics of a fictional setting, which is something Tolkien loved. So you'll have to forgive me if I get some of the words wrong. So a little biography of Sauron. One of the earliest acts of Eru Iluvator, who was the big G-god of Middle-earth, was the creation of the Ainur, who were a pantheon of gods and goddesses. Now the first and mightiest of the Ainur was Melkor, who would become the big bad of the mythos. And after him there were 14 more Ainur known as the Valar, and a host of lesser Ainur known as the Maiar who were more like demigods or angels, and these included Gandalf, Soriman, and the Balrog amongst their numbers. Now, one of the Maiar was Myron, the Admirable, who was a follower of Aule, the Valar of Crafting. As the greatest craftsman in Middle-earth, Myron loved nothing so much as bringing order out of chaos and the specific act of creation. Eventually, however, he began to become consumed by a desire to not only create, but to control, and his passion for benevolent creation was replaced with dark obsession. It was in this frame of mind that he turned to Melkor, who was the master of weaving ruin, strife, and oppression. It was around this time that Myron became Sauron the Abhorred. Eventually, Melkor's evil schemes were thwarted and he was imprisoned by the Valar. And this left Sauron three ages, or 2,874.6 years, to rebuild Melkor's shattered host and wait for his master to return from his confinement. Now, in Sauron's mind, the return of Melkor would mark a new age of order and strength. But to his dismay, when Melkor was finally released from his prison, his only interest was to spread chaos and corruption. So Sauron ended up conflicted with Melkor, basically like Darth Vader was with Emperor Palpatine. Now, during this period of servitude to Melkor, Sauron, or Gorthar the Cruel, as he was also known, developed a particular hatred for the race of men, and he desired to break and subjugate them. Eventually, his hubris did catch up with him when he, after he transformed the elven island of Tol Sirion into Tol in Garhoth, the island of werewolves, with him taking the form of the king of the werewolves. Eventually, he was bested by the daughter of the elven king Luthien, and he fled in, a, in the form of a vampire. Now, this failure on Sauron's part did not please his master, and while Sauron disappears from the epic for some time, it was probably due to his punishment at the hands of Melkor, his dark lord. Unfortunately for Melkor, however, Sauron's failures also set loose a series of events that led to Melkor being utterly defeated and banished to the void. Now free from his cruel master, Sauron came forward in a pleasing form and begged for forgiveness from the Maiar. However, when they ended up sending him up the chain of command and told him to ask the Valar for redemption, he grew afraid of the consequences and he fled. At this point, Middle-earth entered its second age. Sauron eventually settled in what would become Mordor, and he watched as the realm of elves and men prospered. Now, the elves were renowned for their ability to craft jewelry under the command of their lord Celebrimbor. Eventually, they were approached by an angelic being named Anatar, the lord of gifts. Now, you can already figure out where this is going. Anatar taught the elves how to forge the rings of power, with the elves creating 16 rings under the lord of gifts' tutelage. Seven were for dwarves, and nine were for men. Now, secretly, Celebrimbor used this knowledge, unknown to Sauron or Anator, to forge three rings for the elves. Finally, in the cracks of Mount Doom, Anatar forged the most powerful ring of all, the One Ring. Now, when Anatar, or Sauron, slipped on this One Ring, Celebrimbor of the elves awoke to Sauron's ruse, and what followed was a long and bloody war between the elves and Sauron. Now, while Sauron eventually defeated the elves, with Celebrimbor's body being used as a war banner by the Orcish army, the men of Numenor stepped in and they defeated Sauron once again. However, Sauron still had the ring, and with its power, he was able to slowly regain his grip on Middle-earth. Now, he realized that his ability to play politics was a lot better than his ability as a military commander. And it was during this time that he used the nine rings of men to, cor to corrupt a number of great lords into the dreaded Nazgul. He also corrupted the inhabitants of Rune and Herod in the south, and worse, burned the Entwives alive in their gardens. And during this time, Sauron took on the grandiose title of Lord of the Earth and King of Men. Now a continent away, Therizan, the, uh, the king of the island nation of Numenor, decided to punish the upstart Sauron, and he assembled a vast fleet and army and sailed them, and both sailed and marched them up to the gates of Mordor itself. 
Sauron came out to meet the army, and surprisingly, he debased himself to Farazan, and he was taken back to Numenor in chains. Now, ever the master of deception, Sauron slowly gained the trust of Farazan, and he went from prisoner to chief advisor in the span of a half a century. As Farazan was beginning to feel the chill winds of his mortality, Sauron, who took on yet another alias, Zigur the Wise One, fed him a number of lies, promising him the secret to immortality if he would renounce his devotion to the Valor, Remember them? Now, as the power behind the throne, Zigur transformed the once magnificent kingdom of men into a realm of dark evil. And the worship of Melkor became the state religion, and Zigur also built a great black temple where he enthroned himself. The men of Numenor turned to human sacrifice, and they even burned the white tree on a fiery altar. As his greatest act of defiance, Sauron convinced the elderly Farazan to declare war on the Valor and sail Numenor's vast fleets to the undying lands of the Far West. In a cataclysmic act, Eru Ilvatar, the big G-god, remember him? Changed the world so that the West was now sealed off from the mortal world, and he obliterated Numenor, causing it to sink Atlantis-like beneath the waves. Farazan, however, did get his wish. He was granted immortality, but he was sealed in the Cave of the Forgotten until the end of time. Yet again, Sauron, the emperor of down but not out, ebbed away and his body was destroyed. However, as long as his one ring lasted, his spirit remained immortal. And while he was able to rebuild his body, he was cursed with the inability to again assume a fair form, which was a major setback for someone like the Master of Deception. So he channeled his hatred into building up another army and attacking the men and elves of Middle-earth. On the plains of Daggerlad, just north of the gates of Mordor, he engaged in a battle with, with the men of Gondor under Elendil and the elves under Gil-galad. Now, for casual Tolkien fans, the Battle of Daggerlad is represented in this game is a prelude to the battle that takes place at the beginning of the movies. Tolkien didn't give a great deal of description to the battle, but he did indicate that at the beginning of the battle, the Sylvan Elves and some of the tribes of men, defying gil orders, rushed into the battle prematurely and they were slaughtered. After a hard fight, Sauron's forces were pushed back behind the Black Gates into Mordor. Now the vast host of men and elves who died in the battle, were buried where they fell, and these were the ghostly dead that Frodo and Sam found in the dead marshes. Okay, this week's game is Sauron, and it was published in 1977 by SPI Games. Its designer was Rob Mosca. It shares the rule set with another game, Gondor. Now, it represents the Battle of Daggerlad, which is not to be confused with the battle where Sauron lost the One Ring. And while this battle did occur at the Gates of Mordor, it's also not to be confused with the battle that was at the end of the Lord of the Rings, where, where Aragorn and his mixed army from Gondor and Rohan defeated the forces of Sauron. Now, the rules for this are kind of interesting, and I wouldn't say they always work. This game still feels a little bit underdeveloped. I think the core rules work really well. However, the implementation isn't so good. After playing this game numerous times, I did have to change the rules a little bit to make it a little more balanced. Otherwise, the forces of Sauron pretty much get steamrollered in the game with the rules as written. So let's go through those rules. Now, the cardboard pieces represent the military units, the magical units, and the leaders that took part in the battle. And the letters and numbers printed on each unit counter represent attack strengths, armor protection, and morale of the various combat units. Now, leaders also have a rally rating printed on them, and magical leaders have an additional magic capability number. Now, the attack strength is the ability of a unit to inflict casualties. And the best attack strength is an A, with the worst being an E. Now, certain combat units that are capable of both melee and missile fire combat have two attack strength letters. Now, missile strengths are the lowercase letters, and the lowercase letter attack strength shows missile fire capability or the ability to fire a weapon at another unit over a distance. Also note that missile strengths, which have only a lowercase letter, for example, the E units, may only attack during missile phase and not during the melee phase. There's also an armor protection rating, and this indicates the armor worn by a unit to protect itself. And the best armor is rated 4, the worst is 1. There's a morale rating. This is the ability of a unit to withstand casualties. The higher a unit's morale, the less serious the casualties it will sustain in a battle. And the best morale is a W, while the worst is a Z. The leaders have a rally rating, and this is the numerical ability of that leader to, ra to rally disrupted units. And it's also used in leader combat. And finally, there's a magic capability rating, and this is the maximum number of magic capability points that a magic leader can expend in a game. The game is broken up into turns, and each turn is broken up into separate phases. And there are seven in the Sauron game, eight in the Gondor game. 
Let's go through just a brief outline of the sequence of play. You start with an initial magic leader movement phase, and leaders with, with a magic capability rating can either move or attempt to cast a spell, and the Western Ness leaders go first in this phase. There's a Forces of Sauron movement phase, where the Sauron player can move as many of their units as they wish, and magic leaders may not move during this phase. This is followed by a Forces of Sauron combat phase, and combat units of Sauron player can attack by either missile or melee against the Western S player. Now all missile combat is resolved first, and this is followed by individual leader combat and finally melee combat. There's then a second magic leader movement phase. Players basically repeat the initial magic leader movement phase. However, there is one exception, and that is leaders that cast spells in the initial phase cannot do so again in this phase. The Western S units can then move and combat, just as Sauron's units did earlier. And finally, there's a joint rally phase, and both players can use their leaders to attempt to rally combat units that are disrupted. Like most other war games, at the conclusion of this sequence, the game turn markers move to the next turn, and the sequence is begun again. Now let's talk about movement. During the movement phase, the phasing player can move as many or as few of their units in any direction that they desire. But they do have to pay a movement cost for the terrain type that that unit's moving through. And if they don't have the movement points to enter a certain type of hex, they have to halt their movement. Now all cavalry units and leaders have a movement allowance of 6, while all infantry units have a movement allowance of 4. Now magic leaders can expend their movement allowance during both magic leader movement phases, if they don't cast spells but they cannot move in the phase in which they do attempt to cast a spell. And units can't enter the hex of an enemy unit. However, they can move freely through hexes that contain friendly units. But remember, no two units can end their movement on the same hex. This is referred to as a stacking limit. And there are three exceptions to the stacking limit in the game. The first is leaders. They don't count towards stacking restrictions. And if there's special formations, more than one friendly unit can be in a hex. And finally, in the Gondor game, siege weapons are a stacking exception. Now the zone of control of a combat unit defi is defined as the six hexes adjacent to and surrounding the hex that the combat unit is occupying. And as soon as a friendly combat unit enters an enemy combat unit's zone of control, then that friendly unit has to stop, and it cannot move for the rest of the movement phase. Though in this game it doesn't cost an additional movement point to enter an enemy zone of control. Now there's only two ways to leave an enemy zone of control, by a retreat or advance after combat, or by eliminating the unit that's exerting the zone of control. Now friendly units in the enemy zone of control at the beginning of a friendly combat phase do have to engage in melee combat with one enemy unit. In this particular game, they don't have to fight all of the enemy units in their zone of control, they, but they do have to fight at least one, and it's their choice. Zones of control don't extend into or through mountain hexes, nor into tunnel hexes, but they do extend through walls, gates, or tower hex sides that have been breached. Now there are three types of combat in the game. There's missile combat, that's firing projectiles onto an in-range target by a phasing player that's capable of missile fire. There's also leader or individual combat, which represents the hand-to-hand -hand combat between two adjacent leaders. And finally there's melee combat, and that takes place whenever a phasing player has a combat unit in the zone of control of an enemy combat unit. Now rules as written say that a unit may move, fire missiles, and then melee during the same game turn. I think that's a little bit much. It makes your missile units way too powerful. So I say that a missile unit has a choice of either firing or engaging in melee combat. And if they're adjacent to an enemy, they have to involve themselves in melee combat. They can't fire during that turn. Also, as I mentioned before, all missile combats resolve first in the combat phase, then any leader individual combats resolve, followed by any melee combat. You can tell a missile unit by the small letter that's in the attack strength, and they can engage in missile combat up to two hexes away. Now, elven bowmen are special in that they have a range of three hexes. Missile units can't be fired through towers, groves, or mountain hexes, or over hexes occupied by siege towers. They may be fired through walls and hexes occupied by other units, and into or out of tunnel hexes, if they follow the path of the tunnel. And units that are capable of only missile combat, those that have only a small attack letter, may never voluntarily enter an enemy zone of control. Now following the resolution of all missile combat, the players can engage in leader combat. That is, leader units may, can fight each other. And any of the phasing players' leader units may, if they wish, attack an enemy leader to whom they're adjacent. But leader combat is always optional. To engage in leader combat, the defending leader subtracts his rally rating from that of the attacking leader. The result, which is either a plus, plus or minus number or a zero, is the combat differential. The phasing player then rolls one die and cross-references that die roll with the combat differential on the leader combat results table to get the result. 
And if a leader engaging in leader is stacked with a combat unit and that leader suffers any combat result, then the combat unit has to retreat two hexes. If it can't do so, it's either flipped over to a reduced strength. If it's already been flipped over, it's eliminated. And leaders can only attack once per combat phase, though a given leader may be attacked any number of times per combat phase by enemy leaders. Now finally we get to melee combat. After all missile and leader combat's been resolved, then each phasing combat adjacent to an enemy unit must attack one enemy unit they're adjacent to. Now if more than one friendly combat unit is adjacent to an enemy unit, each friendly unit may melee that enemy. And while attacking units can only attack once in the combat phase, defending units can be attacked multiple times. And note in this game, each attack is resolved separately. The melee combat is then resolved in two steps. First, the phasing player cross-references the attack strength of their unit with the armor protection rating of the defending unit, using the casualty probability table. And the numbers listed under the cross-reference include the total which the phasing player has to throw with two die to produce a casualty. If the total of the two die thrown by the phasing player is not listed, there's no casualty. If that total is amongst those listed, then the phasing player proceeds to the casualty results table. And there, the phasing player throws one die and cross-references that throw with the morale rating of the defending unit, and the result is the type of casualty that's inflicted on that defending unit. Now if a hex is vacated as a result of melee combat, not missile combat, then the victorious unit can advance into that vacated hex, and this advance is made regardless of enemy zones of control, and the advancing unit cannot combat again. Now if a unit is forced to retreat from combat, the player of that unit that is retreating decides the course of the retreat. However, the retreating unit cannot enter an enemy zone of control, an enemy occupied hex, a prohibited hex, or pass through an impassable hex. If they're forced to do so, they're eliminated. Now if the only hex available for retreat is occupied by a friendly combat unit, and remember the stacking restrictions, then the unit in that hex can be displaced to make way for the retreating unit. And if the displacement of the unit would cause the displaced unit's elimination, the original retreating unit is eliminated instead. Now all units that are retreated or have been displaced by a retreat are considered disrupted. In rules as written, disrupted units cannot move. I let them move one hex per turn. They can also not attack in any fashion until they're rallied by a leader. However, they do defend normally. And if a disrupted unit is forced to retreat again, it's eliminated instead. Now instead of fighting certain units, for instance the bowmen with only the missile capabilities and cavalry units that are attacked solely by infantry can choose to retreat one or two hexes before the fighting. And when they do this, they roll a d6 and on a 1 to 3 they're automatically disrupted. After this, the attacking unit has the option of advancing into the hex that the retreating unit left. Now the leaders represent the fictional figures from Tolkien's novels that played a prominent part in the simulated battle. And leaders can engage in individual combat, they can rally combat units, they can command special formations, and if given a magic rating they can cast spells. Leaders have to be stacked with a combat unit at the beginning of a friendly combat phase. As I kind of mentioned before, they can only be attacked by other leaders, and while they can be reduced in effectiveness, they can never be disrupted. Also, as I mentioned before, they don't have a zone of control, nor are they ever affected by the zone of control of an enemy. Now, the only effect that leaders have on combat units is their ability to reduce damage of the unit that they're stacked with. And if a unit stacked with a leader takes an E result, it becomes a one half E result, and a one half E result becomes a two hex retreat, while a two hex retreat becomes a one hex retreat, and of course a one hex retreat becomes no result. And if the combat unit is eliminated, the leader in that hex is moved to the nearest friendly combat unit. Also, if a unit is forced to retreat, the leader stacked with them also has to retreat. Uh, the final phase of each turn is a rally phase, and during the joint rally phase, leaders can attempt to rally any disrupted units of their own nationality. I've changed this to their own side that they're adjacent to. Uh, it makes the game a little more fun. And these units cannot be on the other side of an unbreached wall or an impassable terrain. Also, the rules say that a leader can rally only three combat units per game turn. I let them try to rally all adjacent units per game turn. And to rally a unit, the player announces which leaders are doing the rallying. They check the rally ratings of the leader, they roll 2d6, and they consult the rally table. And of course, rally units are no longer disrupted. Now, each side can employ special formations. 
And for the Western S player, there are two types of special formations. Two cavalry units can form a wedge, or two infantry units can form a shield wall. Now to do this, they have to be of the same nationality, and their attack, armor, and morale strengths have to be the same. They also have to begin a movement phase stacked with or adjacent to a leader, and they cannot be in an enemy zone of control. Now the two combat units then move into the same X with the leader, and they immediately form the special formation. However, they cannot move in the same game turn in which the special formation was formed. Now all special formations have an attack strength of A, an armor protection of 4, and a morale rating which is the same as that of the units that make up the formation. Wedge units have a movement allowance of 3, while the shield wall have a movement allowance of 2. And if a special formation suffers a 1 half E result, one of the units in the formation is eliminated. If the formation is forced to retreat, then each unit must retreat to a different hex. And in both of these cases, the formation is no longer cohesive. Now the Sauron player can take two full strength slave units and they can form a slave phalanx at any time during a Sauron movement phase. And they can do this without the help of a leader. Now these units have to begin their movement phase in adjacent hexes. And during the movement phase, one simply moves into the hex occupied by the other. And the slave phalanx is now formed. It can then move no more during that movement phase. And slave phalanxes have a movement allowance of two. They also have an armor protection rating of 3 and a morale rating of Y. To disband a special formation, you simply move one of the units to a different hex than the other during a movement phase, and you don't need leaders to disband these formations. Certain leaders are designated as magic leaders, and these are leaders with magic capability ratings to the right of the rally rating. Now, magic leaders can move twice during a game turn, however, they cannot cast a spell or move in the same phase. In the Sauron game, only Sauron can actually cast spells. And in order to cast these, he has to be stacked in the same hex as a pedestal counter at the beginning of his magic leader movement phase. In other words, he has his little footstool that he has to pop up on to cast a spell. I'm kind of sad that in a game about rings of power and these vast artifacts that Sauron created, he has to resort to using a footstool to cast spells with. Now the pe pedestal doesn't have a movement allowance and it has to be carried by an orc archer and the orc archer carrying the pedestal retains its normal movement allowance in combat ratings while carrying the pedestal. And if the orc archer carrying the magical ottoman is attacked and is either eliminated or forced to retreat, the pedestal can be captured by the enemy. It can never be eliminated or retreated and it may be captured and recaptured throughout the game. It, now in this game I've dispensed with the magical point system, otherwise the magic becomes very, very powerful. And I allow only three spells. The first is Sinister Vision. This lasts for one game turn, and in it all Western S units, other than dwarves or elves, with a morale rating of X or lower, are immediately disrupted. They have to be rallied just as other normal disrupted units would be, and to be rallied they must be at least three hexes from Sauron. And basically I just allow this twice per game. There's also the Wrath of the Ring Wrath. The, the Wrath of the Ring Wraiths, or the Wraith of the Ring Wraths, this lasts for three consecutive game turns. The effect of it is that all Sauron units within five hexes of the Ring Wraith increase their attack strength one level when attacking in melee only. Doesn't apply to missile. And this can be cast three times per game. Finally, there's the Beast of Mordor, and the Beast of Mordor can be conjured by Sauron during any night game turns. Now, it normally costs magical capability points, but since I've gotten rid of those, I just, I just give it an automatic cast if no other spells are being cast. Now, in addition, this, the Beast of Mordor has its own magical capabilities that are activated by Sauron. And the beast is initially stacked with Sauron upon being conjured, and once slain, it cannot be brought back into play. Now the beast's armor protection is 4, its morale rating is X, and its movement allowance is 4. It's also unaffected by enemy zones of control and it doesn't exert a zone of control of its own. Once it's conjured, then Sauron can use the following actions once per turn in addition to the beast's normal movement and attacks. And these additional movements and attacks take place in the magic leader movement phase. The first is flight and the beast can be moved 12 hexes regardless of terrain, movement cost, or restrictions. There's also a horn attack, where the beast is allowed to attack with an attack strength of A. There's also death breath, which automatically kills all friendly or enemy units within a two hex radius of the two frontal hex sides. And this can only be used once. The beast can be killed by any combat unit using a missile or melee combat. And if the beast of Mordor suffers a one half E result, then they're flipped over and their normal movement allowance is halved. 
It can also no longer use any magical attacks or movement. Like a lot of these early SPI games, there's a fairly complex system of demoralization rules. I think the only thing they added to the game is a lot of extra record keeping. So what I say is that both sides have a demoralization of value of 100, and they lose points whenever a unit is eliminated. Every turn you, you total the number of demoralized points up, and when that value is reached, the other side is assumed to have won the game. To, to determine the demoralization value of a unit, you take the attack value with A being 5, B 4, C 3, D 2, and E 1. You add the armor protection, and finally the morale of that unit with W equal 4, X equals 3, Y equals 2, and Z equals 1, and that gives you the unit's demoralization value. And I've gone ahead and made a little table here to show you the demoralization values of the various units. Now in this game, with the rules as written, I've noticed that the game rarely lasts for even half the number of turns that are allotted. So what I do is I say that only the even turns are played in the game. Instead of lasting 18 turns, the game lasts 9 turns. With turns 8 and 9 being night turns, and basically during these turns, any disruption result is ignored. Both sides have become fanatical in trying to eliminate each other. There are several turns where each side gains reinforcements, and those are placed on the edge of the game map adjacent to the designated entrance hexes. And I let the units basically stack off the map, However, they do have to pay attention to stacking once they enter the map. Sauron units come in on Hex 1331, which is the Gates of Mordor. Western S units have to come on within two hexes of 1401 on the north side. Now, rules for both sides say that they can't move more than two hexes from the Road of the Orcs. I would say ignore this. Now, Elven units are special in that they can cross any hex on the game map, excluding craters, mountains, and walls, at the cost of one movement point per hex and they still use roads at one half movement points. Also, elves can freely leave enemy zones of control during their movement. It does, however, cost an elven unit one extra movement point to leave an enemy zone of control, in addition to the cost of entering the hex to which they're going. Now, dwarf units can also ignore the specific zones of control of all troll and or goblin units for the purposes of movement. Finally, the Western S player can employ magic weapons, and they have two magic weapons, Narsal and Aglos. And only Gilgalad can use Eglos, the spear, and Isildur or Elendil can use Narsal, the sword. And any unit or individual can capture or carry these. If a magical weapon is stacked with a leader, then that weapon augments the attack of the combat unit stacked with that leader. And when determining the casualty result against an enemy, the enemy unit defends at one level lower on the morale scale. Magical weapons also allow a particular leader to, to act at one level higher on the rally rating. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and play the game. Okay, this is Sauron. First of all, a uh, little order of business. What is Sauron's favorite soft drink? Mountain Doom. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Okay, let's take a quick look at the game here. I've got the uh, Western S units up here at the top. I've got Sauron's units down here at the bottom. And over here is the turn track on the, on the uh, right. I've also added a chart menu or two uh, in the Vassal module just to make things go a little easier. I put a sequence of play and several of the CRTs and stuff. If you guys really are going to play this and want this particular Vassal module that I made, just uh, let me know and I can maybe email it to you. But uh, let's get started here. Now, we would start initially with the initial Magic Leader movement, but Sauron's not even on the board yet so that we don't do that. Uh, B, the Forces of Sauron Siege Phase, that applies to Gondor only. So we can start with the Forces of Sauron moving. And what I am going to do is I'm going to actually retreat a little bit because I can use these uh, slopes here for uh, a little bit of protection. The slopes add a... Uh, if a defending unit is attacked through an upslope hex side, you add one to the defender's armor protection rating. So. We, the forces of Sauron can use any help they can get. So we're going to just spread them out around here. Uh, I can't make that. That's a, that's a, that costs two to cross that. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then these guys will go here. One. I think I'll have this guy go out here. Four. Now, I'm going to say that you don't have to pay. Since you're on a road, you don't have to pay to go across that. And these are actually half, so that's one, two, three, and then one. 
two, three, four, and then these guys will go one, two, three, four, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Um, I'll just stay put there. That's about all. Okay, that's it for Sauron's movement. Uh, we go to the next move sequence, and that's going to be the forces of Sauron combat. Doesn't apply. And um, then we go to the second magic leader. Doesn't apply. And the Western S units can move. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, this is game turn two. I'm, I'm only doing every other game turn here. So game turn two means the Western S units will get reinforcements for turn two. Let's pull them up here. And these all arrive. So I'll put them just off the board here. And like I say, I go ahead and instead of having that where they stagger in, I let them come in all at once. So basically off the, off the uh, game board, they can stack. But let's go ahead and start with these guys. These little doors are going to waddle down the road and they can go eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because roads count as half. And let's just move them. We want some room for our other guys to come in here. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four. We want to try to move everybody forward as quickly as possible. Now, I don't know whether it costs two to move downhill or not. It never really says. It says two to cross it. So I'm going to say two, three, four. We're just going to assume this does cost to move downhill. You have to watch what you're doing. Two, three, four. And... Okay. Um. Then these uh, cavalry unit can go six, two, three, four, five, six. And what this guy is, Isildur's with a, he's with a cavalry unit. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four. There we go. Okay, and that is the end. Oh, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we can bring these guys on. Now they can go one, two, three, and then four, 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 four. And I guess what we'll do is, I think Gil Gallet will just, um, he'll be up at the front here. Sir Dan will be right here. And then we just, all we can really do is just keep these guys kind of together. March them down, march all the elves together, I guess. Try to keep them as close to the road as possible. And there we go. Okay, so we've got this big elven column coming in here. And that is turn two. We go to turn four, and then this one, Sauron, can move his first forces in. Put them down here, right off the gates of Mordor. Sauron gets to come into the game with his little Ottoman. Ottoman? Ottoman? That is just the dumbest thing. <laughs> that is really stupid. I mean, couldn't they just use like a ring or something? I don't know. But we'll we'll play with it. Let's see. I want Sauron to be here. I think that's going to be a good place for him with his little orc archers and his ottoman. And then um, we need to kind of clear an area. Hmm. Wargs. Or, well, no, hold on a second. One, two, three, okay. This guy will move into place here, and then we're just going to, we're going to keep, kind of keep the line together if we can. One, two, three, four. Um...
Wow, I gotta say one, two, three, four here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And let's see, where are we? We. Hmm. I think I'll go off to the off this direction here. Okay. So they've moved. They've moved all their guys. This guy's moved. And now we're in, in position here. So hopefully we can kind of maybe draw the uh, the Western S forces into this little valley here and this little dip and wipe them out. Okay, Western S units get to go. One, two, let's see. One, two, three, four. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I can make it. And these men will go. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. Slowly, we're making our way down the orc road here. And the other thing you could do, I guess, is change this up, is move the armies into place a little closer. That would probably work a little better. I don't know. I, every time I've played this, as I, I've played this with 18 turns, uh, by about turn 10, Sauron's usually wiped out. So it makes the night turns kind of a moot point. And then sometimes Sauron will wipe... Well, I've, I've played this a few times with my adaptations with the spells, and Sauron's able to wipe out the other guys. Whatever, whatever, whoever ends up winning, they've usually... One by turn eight or nine. Uh, I don't know. At, th at this point, I wonder if this was a magazine game. I'm not sure if it was or not, and that this was kind of rushed out the door. I think SPI had a tendency to do that. They really, they made some awesome games. I mean, some of the best games ever, but uh, there was a tendency to also try to get quantity out there. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And yeah, we'll still let this guy waddle over. Okay. There's a crater here. Can't do much around those craters. Can move three units. I keep forgetting that. Hold on a second. I, I keep forgetting that. Okay. One, two, three, four. He can move there. And then one, two, three, four. I should have moved these guys a little further. That's okay. Move that guy there and that guy there. Actually, he can move in here if he follows the road. So, okay, that is the end of turn four. We move to turn six. Okay, Sauron gets reinforcements again. This time he gets this guy and the Wrath. The Wraiths. The Wraiths. Now, I guess Sauron could... He could go ahead and cast his spell. And, um, I don't know, there's no range on the spell. That, uh, let's see what the spell was. Um, the spell is, um, Sinister Visions. It says, one full turn, all Western S units can be turned over. Uh, which effectively would make these guys unable to move. Um, damn, that's powerful. I mean, he could pretty much stop these guys in their tracks all the way off. Um, let's see here. I don't think that's necessarily fair on Sauron's point, but 
let's go ahead and I don't know. Let's am I do I do it and ruin the game or not? I think we will. Let's just okay. We're gonna make a rule up here that uh, the ten hex rule. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that would be a little fairer to the Western S units. Otherwise, if he casts that spell, it pretty much wipes these guys out. I have to re get these guys going. And then he can cast it again. Now that would mean that would be a reason why you would want to use more turns here. And that's it. We go back and forth. So I think at fixing the game, I've already damaged it. So this was a finely tuned instrument. Let's just go with the 10 hex thing. I think that probably would be a little more fair. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, and this guy can go. We'll send some ring wraiths out and then gonna move these guys together into their phalanxes. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Okay. And like I say, I think we'll keep Sauron, we'll keep on the side of that hill. And now the west, oh, okay, let's see, can he go one, two? No, he cannot. So they're still out of range. Now then, the Western S units can go. Um, I think we'll go up and form a wedge here. And the dwarves, where's this other dwarven unit? Oh, Baldrin has his dwarves. They're way too far out. Okay, we are going to, this guy could go six. Um, I think I'm going to try. I think they're weaker over in the end. We are going to go here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And three, one, two, three. He can do that. Um, Baldrin could try to take Gorgol, I think. One, let's see, there's one, two, three, four. He cannot. We're going to stop here and we'll form a shield wall. Four. Let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now those elves, one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. And then he can follow up. He can follow up. One, two, three, four. These guys can follow up. And let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the further I can go, 
one, two, three, four. We'll just put them here. And here, okay, everybody's going. So we finally have some combat in the game. And let's start over here with the men attacking here. Then they'll try to attack here. Then they'll try to attack here. Oh, we've got to start with the, I for, almost forgot. We've got to start with the uh, archers first. Let's start with this guy here. Um, he is an archer. And we go to our CRT here. Now, this archer is a D. And he's going to fire at this guy here, which has a, a defense of two. But uh, we make it, because he's on a hill, let's see, I think, let's see, defensing slope is a defending unit's attack through an upslope at one to the defender's armor protection rating. Okay. So since he's on a slope, doesn't say whether this applies to melee or missiles, so we'll just say both. Um, he's at a two. And we'll say he's a three. Okay, so a three, a D to three. We roll two die, and we get a seven. So a D to three is a six to eight, so that is a hit. We check our we roll six and check the casualties. So we roll a this guy has a Z for his armor, these goblins do. And so a six is a retreat one. So they go back one and they're disrupted. He could move in if there's a retreat. Well, they can only move into the hex that's it is is isolated. So I don't think they can really move in there. Now then this guy's gonna go. Same thing. He rolls a seven, so that is another hit on those goblins. We roll a four. A Z four is an elimination, so these goblins are eliminated. And then Elendil can go. Now, I say with their sword, they're going to increase their... Um, actually, they would. their defender's morale would be down by one. So we'll say uh, the men have a B. They're fighting a two up a slope, so that's a three. So B and three, we roll a six. B, three, that's two to seven, so that's a hit. And we are going to take it from Z, so it's not going to affect anything because they're already at the worst armor for the goblins. So we roll a D6 and get a six, and I guess you could say that you could go down one here. Let's just do that. We say with the, um, with Narsal, we're going to subtract one from the die roll, making it a little more serious. So we'll do that, and he has to retreat two. Now, he'll go through here, one and two. And mark disrupted. Now, question is, if you disrupt a disrupted unit, I don't think I'm going to let him that go bad or go. So he'll move in. Okay. Again, this rules, the rules, like a lot of old SPI games, leave a lot to be desired, so that's okay. Um, that is it for the Western S units, and it's in, end of turn. We'll go to eight. Sauron will go with his trolls coming in. Okay. So what is Sauron going to do? These guys can move one. I'll let him move back. This guy can't move out of the enemy zone of control. I will let him here so he can try to rally. Slave units can move two. Or the phalanxes can. This guy's going to move in place. This guy's going to move in place. One, two. And one, two. We don't want Sauron too far in the front ranks. I don't really want to leave these guys. One, two, one, two, three, four. Wait. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And 
left. One, two, three, four. Okay. That's all the movement I can do. I could try to break those guys, but I don't think I will. I don't think Sauron's going to cast a spell because... Let's see who's in 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think I still want my army to... I want more in, in range, so I can take a few hits before doing that. Okay. Is that it? Okay, these guys can go. So we've got, he has it in range of two. This uh, goblins do, and they have an E against a two. That's a six to eight. They get a seven. So they hit uh, this. these men here. These guys have a Y. So Y1 is eliminated. Okay. Okay, that is it. Could try to move some guys in place, but I could have done that. Oh well, that's fine. Okay, Western S units get to go. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I can go here, because uh, you can fire over. Uh, I'm going to make this guy go here. These dwarves will go here, and they are a shield wall. Wait. Yeah, they can, because they can go down the road. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, four. One, two, three, four. Three, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Now, I, th I've, I have learned this, you really don't want to have, you want to have an out for your guys to retreat back to, because if you don't, it'll, it'll tear your line apart. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Let's try this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four. Um, one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. We'll go around that hill. Um, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there everybody's moved. Now then we can do our we can fire. So we'll fire here to here. So we've got an E to two. So that's a um <coughs> excuse me, six to eight with an eight, so that is a hit. Now the goblins are uphill, so we roll a four. It's an E already, so these guys are a Z would be eliminated. Okay, here we've got a E to 3. We roll, or actually be an E to 4. Is a 6. Okay, E to 4. It was a 3, but we go uphill, so that's a 6. That's a hit. And they have a, a Z. A 1. Okay, that's another elimination. Okay, anybody here? Nobody, 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 nobody. 
And like I said, that one other one probably wasn't a hit because I should have made the casualty probability table. I should have changed it from a uh, three to a four for the defender, but that's okay. Um, let's see. Okay, back to where I get distracted here. Okay, so we have a D, or he's an E. That's his little, the little E is he's firing. So we're going to go E to the wargs. E to wargs. Wargs are a two, and we're going to change it to a three. Three to six. So no hit there. And that is it for, um, that's it for your missile fire. Now we go to leaders to leaders. Okay, Baldrin is going to try to fight Gorgal. We go to leader combat. Baldrin is a six and Gorgal is a four. So plus two. And we roll a five. So it's a defender uh, D one half E. So we can flip him. And he's flipped. Now he isn't sent back. I don't think these guys are sent back. Unless he was forced to retreat. So he's okay. Now we can go. That's it for leaders. Uh, we can go with, with straight up attacks. These elves are going to go with a D. Um, against a. Um, two. D2. But it's going to be a three. D3. That's a six to eight. It's a seven. So they are able to hit here. Uh, it's a Z, so we roll a three Z. So that's an elimination. Okay. And they will move into that. Okay. These dwarves here, I think I'm going to go with these dwarves first. They're a shield wall. Let me check my shield wall. Uh, Blade Phalanx's dwarves. Uh, let's see. we got to go back and find the rules. I said it. Uh, leaders, 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 special units. There we go. Special units for dwarves is a shield wall. All special formations have an attract strength of A and an armor protection of 4. So A and 4. Let's see. Whoops, got the wrong one. I don't know. These, that's, these rules are kind of convoluted. So anyway, their attack strength is A, and they go from a 3 to a 4. Okay. So with their attack strength of A against uh, Gargol. Let's see, attack strength of A. Gargol's, or not Gargol, the wargs have a two, but we call it a three since they're uphill. So A3 is a six. That's enough. Okay, the wargs are a Z. We roll a d6, and a 3z is an elimination. So these guys are eliminated. Gorgol has to go to the closest friendly unit, and then these guys can move into place. Okay. Next, I guess, these men are going to go against the wargs, and the men have a b. Uh, so it's going to be a B, and the wargs are at a 2, but it's a 3 since we're uphill. So 6. So B3 is a 6. That's a hit. We roll for D6 against a Z, and it's another 4. Okay. Orgol is disrupted. And those men of... Oh, Gorgol goes back again. These guys can move in. Okay, Eglos and his men are going to go against these slaves. <coughs> now, the slaves, I think, have a they have an armor of a defense of two. Now that they're a uh, they're a they're a slave phalanx. Okay, but he's got Eglos, which is gonna I'm gonna say is gonna give him an extra plus or a minus. Actually, it would be. So we got Gilgalad and his men going a D against a 2. That's a 5 to 8. He misses. Okay, can't do anything there, can't do anything there. Okay, these men are going to go against wargs. And 
the men against the works. So B against A3. They were a two, but they're uphill. So we'll go a six. That's a hit. I think the six always pretty much hits. Um, three. Let's see. B3. Yeah, that's a hit. Okay, we roll a D6 and get a two against a Z. That's another elimination. Okay. These men are going to go with a B against a 2, a B against a 3, an 11. That's nothing. Okay, and then these, these, uh, this cavalry unit is going to go a B against a 3 with a 7. B, 3, 7 will hit. And with a Z, 3 is another elimination. So Sauron's armies are falling apart. Okay. This time, Narsal is being used by Elendil. Again, these sure do sound like... Um, I was a pharmacist for 32 years, and there actually is a Nardil, which is an antidepressant, and an Elavil, which is an antidepressant. So that little quiz I had at the front was kind of the same thing. That's been floating around pharmacy circles for years. Uh, let's see here. So we've got a B against a Z. And a three. A B against a Z and a three. That is a hit. Uh, and since he's disrupted, that's going to automatically eliminate him. We'll take the disrupt sticker off. I don't think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so pretty much those guys have fallen apart. Here we've got a B against a Z with a two. A B2, B2, 4 to 8, and I've got a 2, so no, there's no effect there. And that ends the turn. I, now, I could, as Sauron, let's see, sequence, second magic, western, okay. Nobody can, yeah, he can't move. Okay, so then we rally, and these wraiths have a uh, rally strength of 7. See here. I didn't. I'm not sure with Gorgol. Did I? He should have been flipped. Yeah, he's flipped. Okay. I guess he's not really. Is he disrupted? I don't think he's really disrupted. So. Okay. Wraith is a seven. So we go to see what our leader rally rating is. And a seven, I need a three to nine. And I get a seven. So these guys rally. Hope oh, they can't rally because they are in the zone of control of an enemy unit, so they can't do anything. I guess that's it. Okay, we move to game turn 10. Let's see what happens. Um, Soren's going to go ahead and throw that spell. So basically, everybody in a 10 hex radius that is a. Was it X or lower? Got to think. Yeah, X or lower here is disrupted. So we'll let's count out our ten first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, let's see if we can get a little marker here. Are there markers? Let's see. King of Herod. Um, is there a, just a general marker? Gond Siege Tower. Let's just use the Grons. We'll just use the Grons here. That'll give us an idea where our 10 is. Okay. The so Soren goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and then let's go up this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and let's give me another grand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's gonna. I think we've got pretty much everybody 
There's a couple units that we don't have in our, but they're W's, so they're good. Okay, so now everybody that is an X, Y, or Z is disrupted. So disrupt, disrupt, disrupt. You can see how this would just throw the game. This game was just, I don't know what they were thinking. It is just, oh, and then anybody, yeah, everybody over here. How about these dwarves? They're an X. Well, they're disrupted. I, I don't think anybody checked this game out. And I think uh, that, oh, the guy that made all the games, I think Richard Berg was involved in this too, which there's kind of some Bergian, you see some Bergian involvement in this. Oh, the guy could come up with some amazing ideas, but implementation was a little bit different, I think. I Okay, W's, W's, is X here. Disrupted, Ellendil, Elleville. W, and this X is disrupted. Okay. Over here, Mark disrupted, Mark disrupted. Mark disrupted, Mark disrupted. Although there are things I really like. I like this casualty. It's kind of hard to keep track of stuff, but the CRT is actually kind of neat because you can use morale, you can use armor protection, and you can use combat strengths <coughs> all in it, which I think is kind of cool. So, okay, we'll move Grand out here. We can save him for later. If we, once we cast the spell again, if we do. Okay, everybody is disrupted, and Soriana can't move. He's not sitting on his ottoman again. There's his pedestal. That's, that's the dumbest thing. Okay, that is it for the forces initial magic leader movement phase. Forces of Sauron movement phase. Okay, Mr. Wraith. I guess it's one, two. Well, hold on. That ward can't move. I guess now is the time to, to really hit everybody. Those guys are okay back here. I think we will go ahead and move this guy up. No, we won't. We're going to move our slaves up here. These guys are one, two, and I don't know what the wraith he needs to be. He needs to be stacked with somebody. I should have had him stacked here. One, two, three, four. Those guys can fire. Those guys can fire. Those guys can fire. Uh, I will move here and here, and hopefully the jaws of the trap will close. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's. We got to start with our uh, missile fire. So I think we're going to go ahead and go him against him, and then we'll start here. Now this guy has a. Um, Go CRT. We have an E against a uh, one. Need a four to seven, and we got an eight. So that's not gonna do it. Okay, and then this guy's gonna go against this guy. Eight, no. And then an E against a one. is a six. So that will hit. He's disrupted. So any result for an, even an X, um, any result's going to eliminate him. So. Okay. And then we've got our slave phalanx and they are an A. And uh, an A against a four. A against a four. Four to seven, nine won't do anything. Okay, these trolls are a B against a... Oh, if a phalanx is disrupted, I think they have to actually move back. Well, no. Oh, they're disrupted because of that spell. Okay. 
So I guess a B can go against a three. Two to seven with a seven. So those guys are gone. And those guys are gone. Uh, this guy's going to have to go closest friendly. So that's going to be here. Trolls can move in. Okay, these trolls are going to go to a B to a B to one. They get a eight, which is enough, and that'll get rid of them. And they will move into place. Uh, Gorgal's got his place. Okay, this these guys are A to three with a nine. That's going to be a miss. We've got an A to three with a four. That is a hit. And since this guy's disrupted, he is gone. So Gilgalad's going to have to go to the closest. Um, he could go here. I guess he can go here. They can stack. The leaders can stack. Okay. Now E is going to go against a two. So six to eight is a three. Nothing. Okay. E to two, six to eight, nothing. Orgs don't do anything. Okay, these slave units can go A to 1 with an 8. That's going to be enough to get rid of him. And um, who was that? Was that the slaves or the wargs? I guess that was the slaves. Okay, and then B to 3, a 7. B, 3, that's a hit. Okay, and we roll on the... W with a 4 is a retreat of 1. So this guy is now disrupted. These guys can't do anything. Okay. It's now up to the remnants of the uh, Western S units. That was that we will and we'll check for to see for victory conditions here. 1 1 1 one. Hmm. Uh, this guy, I'll go here. This guy, oh, he can only move one. I forgot. Okay, Isildur will take his guy over here. And then he will move in here with Nardil. Okay. And that is it. So I'm trying to move these guys where they can rally. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, elves can fire three. I forget, keep forgetting that. Um, there we go. I think everybody's moved now. Hopefully, we can rally again. Um, and then so let's go ahead and uh, let's see arrows, arrows, arrows. Any? There's no. Nobody has is rain in range. So that's that. Okay, Baladur, Baldrian, Baldrian. Nope, he's not. He can't do anything. Okay, so now these elves can go against a D3 with a 9. D3 with a 9 is nothing. Okay, D... And these guys are now at a 2. So D2 is a 6. A D2 is a 6. So that is a hit. And we roll a 2 uh, against a Z. So these guys are eliminated. The slave units are eliminated. And he can definitely move in. Okay, D3. 
with an 8. D3 with an 8 is a hit. And a 3 against a B. The trolls have a 3 against... Oh, wait, an X, I'm sorry. An X, one half eliminated, and retreat one. So, disrupt it. We flip him. And he retreats. Now, with him retreating, he can only go into this hex. So, it's going to force this guy to retreat. So, he's now disrupted. This guy's here, and this guy's here. Uh, you have that happen a lot where everybody gets in each other's way. Okay, we got a B to these slaves, which are two, uh, but they're actually going to be a three because they're uphill. So B3 with an eight. Miss. Okay. And then here we have a B. Uh, I think we'll go against the slaves again. So this is going to be a B2 with an eight. A B against a two with an eight is a hit. We roll a three against a Z, so that's going to eliminate these guys. Those slave units are pretty fragile, no matter once you get in on them. Okay. Here we have Narsal with Elendil fighting a Disrupted. So we have a B uh, against a two. B2 is an eight. That's a hit, and that will automatically throw him out. And we will stay put, because I'm going to try to rally. That is the end of the movement phase. So we go into a rally phase. So we'll start with Gorgol trying to rally. Gorgol has a two. Not much. Okay, he needs either a six or a seven. Does not get it. So he can't rally this guy. We'll try this guy. And that's a nine, so nothing. And that's the end of the rallies for the... Um, for the... Uh, Sauron's players. Now we'll go for the uh, rallies for the... Western S. Anarion has a 5, so he needs to roll 2 through 7. So let's just roll through them. 7, so this guy is undisrupted. 8, or 10, not disrupted still. This guy's out of range. Um, okay, Gilgalad has a 9. Um, and it's not listed a leader rating, it goes up to 8. I don't know. what you do in this case. Um, I guess we'll just say automatic. Let's see, 3 to 10, 2 to 11. Let's just say 2 to 11. We'll just go up a, up a notch. So basically, if he rolls a tw if any of these guys roll a 12, they, won't dis they will remain disrupted. So we'll go, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We did get 1. Uh, we'll just pick this guy here. Uh, we'll just pick this guy. Uh, more disrupted. So we got boxcars once. Okay. Uh, Badrion has a six, so he needs a three to eight. That's kind of hard to read down there. Three to eight with a six, so that's enough to undisrupt this guy. Uh, Isildur has a seven, so he needs three to nine. He's got one, two, three. 10, so that guy in the back's not going to make it. 8, this guy will make it. And 10, so this guy doesn't make it. And then over here, Elendil has a 9. So again, I guess we'll see if there's any boxcars. Three times. 2, 3, nope. Okay, so these guys all made it. Disrupted, mark, undisrupted. Okay. Into turn. We go to turn 12. We get more reinforcements. Lots of orcs here. Okay. And let's see here. So we get to try to go some more. Um, Gorgal will move in here with his orcs. This guy will move here. These guys will have to fight. This guy will move here. Okay, actually what I'm going to do, I have a second. Sauron is going to cast. Again, he's going to cast his second um, spell here. The, um, what's it called? The, 
I like the Wrath of Race. I don't know when to use it, but the Sinister Visions, that's it. Okay. The Wrath of Wraith I haven't used, but the Sinister Visions is usually enough. So basically, everybody again is disrupted that is a X, Y, or Z. Okay, so X. Everybody's in range, I think, this time. There's so many problems with this game. Uh, this guy is disrupted. Uh, these W's are cool. Disrupted. 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 Oops. Disrupted. Disrupted. Oh, this guy's an X. Okay. Disrupted. Okay, so that, that thins it out a little bit. Now then, we can move, and I'm going to move here and here. Hopefully I can send these guys back and eliminate them. This guy's going to go here, here. This guy is going to go no room. Be nice if I could just move there and I could go after this guy, but that's okay. That's these slaves are going to go over here. And I think that's oh, and then these guys all come in. Okay. One, four. Came to my orcs. Where there's a whip, there's a way. I always like those Rankin Bath singing orcs. God, they look so silly. <laughs> I remember watching that. And my poor mom was like, hey, this is that Lord of the Rings thing you like. You got to watch it. And I just sat there and just like, oh my gosh. Two. Two. I think I'll. There we go. Yeah, I think we're going to keep our orcs back just a little bit. Okay. Now we can go through and try to take out units. So let's start with here against here. We have an E against a 1. With a four, that's enough. And since it's disrupted, he's gone. And then we've got an E against a one here. A five. That's going to do the same thing here. And then we've got an E attack. Oh, he's attacking directly. Attacking directly. Oh, this guy gets to go. He's going to fire here against an E to two, which is a nine. Nothing. Okay, and then this guy will do the same. I need a 6 to 8. 9 and a 3. So none of these guys fire and hit. Okay, now we can do our um, direct attacks. So we've got an E to 4, which is a 6. That's enough. Uh, e to 4 with a 6, and he's a W with a 5. W5, so retreat 1, but he dis disrupted. I'll step in there. Okay, here we've got an E to... I'm going to go against the disrupted one, so an E to 3 with an 8. Not enough. Okay, these guys are an A to 4 uh, with a 9. A to Four with a nine doesn't make it. Here we've got an A to two. I need a three to nine. That is enough. Okay, so that's disrupted or eliminated. And then Aglos gets to go to the closest. And Kurdan gets to go to the closest. Okay, now over here these wargs are going D to three. Uh, we're going to need a six to eight. Nine? Nope. Uh, D to 3. Uh, that's a D to 3. 3. Nope. 
and then a B2, 3, 7, 10. Nope. Okay, and then these A's are going to go against A3, A to 3, 2 to 8, with a 5. So that's going to get rid of this guy. And that is it for those guys. Now, the few units of the few Western S units that can go, we're going to go here. Needs to stay place here. Oh, where am I going to go? One, two, three, four. That's about all I can do there. These guys have to stay put. He might be able to go and get one of these guys. Okay, then we can move our disrupteds here, 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 here. They're just going to shuffle around. Okay. Can't go anywhere. He can't go anywhere. Okay. Now then, we can try to fight our few guys here. So we have a D to 2. D to 2. D to 2 is a 5 to 8 with a 10, so nothing. I'm going to go against these disrupted trolls. So D to 3. 6. D to 3 with a 6 is enough to hit the trolls, so that's it for the trolls. And then here, D to and that's a 2 because they're in form. So D2 is a 5. So that's enough to hit him. Let's roll with a 5. Z5. Retreat 2. And they have to go to separate areas. And they have to be disrupted. <coughs> um, I'll stay put. Okay. D2 2 with 4 is a 7. So that Vorgs are going to go with a 5, so R2, 1, 2, they retreat, they're disrupted. And then we've got a B to 2, but that's going to be a 3 since they're uphill. B3 with a 5 is enough to hit. And on a Z3, that is enough to eliminate. Here we've got a B... Uh, B... They actually fight, I think, as an A, since they're in wedge form. So, A, 2, 3, 2. A, 3, 2. That is a hit. And with a 6 on a X, retreat 1. Okay, here we have another. This is uh, Nardil's, Narsal's in here. We've got a B against... Oh, we should have done a leader-to-leader -leader combat. We'll do that. 9, 2, 7. So, plus 2... Uh, Narsal versus the uh, Ring Race. We'll give him a plus one extra for having that sort, too. So we'll say it's a plus three. We roll a two, nothing. Okay. Now then these guys will fight. So a B against a two. B two with an eight. B two with an eight is a hit. And... That's a hit, and it's a Z, so we roll a 2. So Mr. Wraith goes here, and these two are eliminated. Okay. And um, that's it. Let's go ahead and do our disruptions. Trace, check those out. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see. The Wraiths aren't doing anything. Sauron, oh, he can try to undisrupt these guys, which is an automatic, so... Undisrupt, undisrupt, Ballander, Ballandul. Let's see, he's got a six, so he needs a three to eight with a four. So these guys are undisrupted. And then these guys are, let's see, he's got a five, so two to seven, five and six. So these guys are undisrupted. And then Gilgaliad. Uh, basically, like I said, we need boxcars, and I've got seven times to roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so he rallies all of these guys.
Okay, and then uh, Isildur needs a three to nine. Two misses and six, so this guy's undisrupted. Okay, there's where we stand at the beginning of turn. Let's see, what turn is this? Turn 14. And I'm going to stop here for just a brief second and do some math with these guys to see what the points are. So we're going to stop for just a sec. I'll be right back. So I went through the uh, points on this on the for the demoralization, and Sauron now has 104 points to the Western S having 74 points. So as you can see by this, by how many turns we actually played, we actually played one, two, three, four. Let's see, we're down to 14. So seven turns. We had seven turns in, six turns. I guess we were at 12, and then we'll just say we're at turn 14. So seven turns in, we've already defeated Sauron. Now, in the in the in the world in the rules as written, Sauron is only at 70 points. So you can see that Sauron's posed pretty quickly in this. Let's go ahead and play this, though, for another... Let's just go ahead and play this out and see where it goes. I think that this is a little, over a little quick. So we will go ahead and have Sauron go again. And this time he doesn't have on his magic... He's going to use the Wrath of the Ring Wraith. And so basically, all Sauron units within the five hexes of the Ring Wraith increase their, their uh, attack strength by one level. So we will go ahead and play that out. So here's the Wraith over here. Uh, Sauron can go ahead and he, he cast his spell and we move. These guys can move. These guys can. This guy can't move. That guy's going to be stuck. Um, the slave units will go ahead and attack, and attack, and attack, and then, you know, I can go ahead and fire here, and uh, let's see, the orcs are going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, Four. Let's see. And we can move these guys in. One, two, three, four. Let's move our ring race. One, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And let's go one, two, three, four. Okay, now our Wrath of Ring Race is cast. So basically everyone in a five hex, one, where's our Wraith? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and put our Gons here. One, two, five. Um... One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so these guys, and then one, two, three, four, five. Um, pretty much everybody across the way from here to here is going to be able to gain an additional one uh, plus one. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead. So first of all, we start with the archers, and the only archers, this guy here, who's going to fire at these elves so we're gonna go e to d e to d e to wait not d um four e to four five to six but they get a plus one uh so now when we say we attack more so it's gonna be a d they're gonna attack so at the four, so two to five. Nine, nothing. Okay, and then here we need a four. Four. Okay, that guy's gonna send those elves. Uh those elves are gonna be at a W. So we roll for a 1d6 and we get a four. They retreat by one and they are disrupted. Okay. That's it for the elves. Now, anybody else? Those two are the only ones. Okay. Now we can go ahead and. Oh, we got to get these guys here. This guy's going against him. 
So a nine, an E against a two. Nine misses. Okay, now we can go ahead. Any, uh, don't think we're attacking any guys to guys. Okay. Okay, so we'll start here with an E to, E to three. E to three is a seven. That's not enough. Okay, here we have an E to four. And this one is not a plus one either. So E to four is a seven. Nothing. Okay. Now then down here, we've got a D to three. A D, so this is going to be a C to three, because I think he's in range. One, two, three, four, five. He's not. Okay. D to three with a six. D to three with a six is enough. Since this guy's disrupted, he's gone. And we can move in. Okay. Here we've got an E to four, but that's going to be a D to four. D to four with a two. D to four with a two. That's enough. And so this guy with a W5, retreat one. Okay, so he's disrupted and he has to retreat now. It's going to send Baldrian and his guy back. So they're back. They're back. I will move into place. Okay. And then we've got an A to 4. A to 4. Can't go any better with that. So A to 4 with a 10. Nothing. Okay. Here we've got a A to 4 with a 12. Nothing. Okay. And then an E to 4. Let's go to E to 3. And that's actually going to be a D. D to 3 with a 3, nothing. Okay, and that is it. Okay. And I think we this lasts for two turns. I think our, yeah, 3 per game. Um, it says 3 consecutive game turns. Okay, yeah, we'll go for that. Now, we'll leave that. Um, there. That's it for the uh, Sauron's forces. Now the Western S forces will try to move and do their thing. Um, I think I'll have my L's move. Move these guys out of the way. Uh, oh yeah, we can move in. Elves can fire three, so he can fire over the heads. Okay. Actually, I think this is going to be pretty much it for um, for the Western S units. I think they're going to take it. Uh, let's go. Okay, so now then we can start to fire. So we're going to fire here. E to E to two. So six to eight, five, nothing. Okay, and here we've got a D to two, and that's a nine, ten, nothing. Now these guys can fire three. So one, two, three. We'll fire here. D7, let's see, that's a D to 2. So yeah, that hits, and there is Z, so we roll a 3, and that's an elimination. And then we roll, let's see, that fired, okay, this guy, he can fire 1, 2, 3, where's he going to fire at? He's going to fire right over here at these slaves. Now, he does have to cross that, so, so we say a D to um uh, e to one is a seven, but we're gonna call it a e to one, so it still is a hit, and we get a four z four is elimination, man, those slaves take it they're tough, but they can really okay now uh let's see, and then this guy's an e to e to one, 
or e to 2 because this guy's a stack phalanx. Uh, let's e to 2 is a 12. Nothing. Okay. And let's see. Then this guy's a d to... He's elves. Let's go ahead and try to hit those slaves again. So we've got a d to 2 with an 8. That's a hit. Slaves are a z3, so that eliminates the slaves. And actually, those are a Y. What did I get? Three, three Y. Actually, it's a one half. So basically, he would be eliminating this guy, and then this guy would be disrupted. So yeah, he'd have to fall back there because they're not Zs or Ys. I forgot. Keep forgetting that. Okay. Uh, let's see, this guy, I don't know if he fired, but D to, D to 3. D to 3 with a 7. D to 3 with a 7 is a hit. And a 6 against a Y. 6 against a Y is a retreat 1. I uh, can't go there. He can only go here. We're going to have to have a little chain of disruptions here. Disrupted. Okay. And yeah, I'll move in there. Okay. No, I won't. I'll stay there, because then I can fight. Okay, now we can do the guys that we're up against. This guy's got a D to Z with a 12. A D1. D1 is a 7 to 12. Nothing. Okay. Here, Isildur with a D against a 3. We roll a 6. D3 with a 6. That's a hit. And a 2 on a Y is an elimination. Okay, we have a D to a 3 with an 8. D to 3 with an 8 is a hit. <coughs> and a 1 is easily an elimination for a Y. Okay, and then now we're going to have our... This guy is a... Um, an A. They actually fight as an A since it's a it's a wedge. Two cavalry together. So B and B, so that's an A against A3. Two to eight. It's a six and a Y is a two, so that's an elimination. Man, these guys are just getting shredded. Okay, and then a B to three is a two. That's not gonna do is that a wedge? No, B to 3. Oh, a 2 does count. Okay, so a uh, they've got a Y. We roll a 6 on a Y. That's a retreat 1. And that's a mark disrupted and a mark disrupted. So that'll be it for those guys. Okay, that is the end of the Westernist turn phase. Um... We can attempt to rally. So we'll start with the Wrath. The Wraith. The Wraith rallying is Wrath. And he's got a leader rally of 7. So he needs a 3 to 9 for these two guys. He can't do this guy because he's in a zone of control. 3 to 9. So there's a 9 and an 8. So this guy is undisrupted. This guy is undisrupted. Um, let's see. I don't have anybody. This guy can try to rally here. He's got a 6, so a 3 to 8. 6, so this guy is undisrupted. Anybody over here? Nope, everybody else is stale. Okay, now we go to the night turn. Night turn 16. Now, during this, nobody can be disrupted. Everybody just fights to the death, so... It's going to get rough. So, first of all, Sauron's going to... He's going to call up the Beast of Mordor. And uh, let's see, Sauron forces. Let's see where our Beast of Mordor is. Here's the Beast. We'll put him here. We've still got the Ring, the Wrath of the Ring Wraiths. Um, this guy has been, let's get go, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, everybody's still in position, so. Okay. And the Beast. Is going. He can't do it. He can fly next on the 
second magic turn at the end of let's see second magic phase after the combat he can do his thing so we can pop him down somewhere or okay i know what i'm gonna do i know what i'm gonna do um hmm, maybe i know what i'm gonna do i don't know what i'm gonna do okay let's start here here and here here let's get rid of that here four um put him here and then move this guy here this guy will go here and here those guys can't do anything this guy will move back and move back okay that's about all i can do and then we do our combat Okay, so let's start with this guy. He's going to fire on... We'll fire on the elves here. So E to 3. E to 3. That's a 3 to 6. Uh, we get 8. Nothing. Okay. Let's pull this up a little bit. So that guy doesn't do anything. And now the D... Uh, let's see. This guy can't. This guy can't. Uh, let's see. Oh, this guy can. And he's an E2, 4. He's actually going to be a D since he's in the Wrath. The Wraith's Wrath. God, that's hard to say. Uh, let's see. E t D to 4. D to 4. D to 4 with a 10. Nope. Okay. And that's it for the... Um, that's it for the missile combat. Now we go to melee combat. Um... I think I'll go against this elves, elven unit here. So we've got a D to 3 with a D to 3 with a 6 to 8. That's a 7. So we got him. So he's disrupted. Let's see what anything else. 6. An X6. So it's a, yeah, it's disrupted and disrupted. Oh, wait. What did I say? Nobody is disrupted. Um, everybody is just maddened with. So, okay, now E, I will go there. Now then, E to 4 is 11. E4 to 11, nothing. And then a D10, nothing. Okay, here we've got a D4. And actually, that's going to be a C4. C4 with a 3, nothing. Okay, here we've got an E. Oh, we forgot Gorgol and Sirdan. Let's... Yeah, well, Gorgol's only at two. He's not going to attack. That's ridiculous. Let's go with an E to four. And he gets a plus one. So that's a D to four is a nine. D to four, nine, nothing. Okay. A to four with a two is nothing. A to four with a... An eight? A to four with an eight. No. Man. Okay, and an E to 4 with a 6. E to 4 with a 6. So that guy is going to take a W, and we roll a 5. So retreat times 1, but not a disruption. We will stay put. Okay, that's it. Uh, now the beast is going to... He can move... But he can't attack. He can only move and attack in those special. So he was, came in on the first, but then we're going to move him. Where am I going to move him? Oh, man, this is tough. Okay. He can't. I don't think he can stack, so... Uh, hmm, where can I move this guy to? I will move him here. Okay, there. I'll move him there. No, I'll move him here. There. We'll just move him there. Okay, that is it. And that should be, I think, the end of the Wrath of the Ring Wraith.
So I guess Soren could cast that again next turn, but in the final turn of the game. Now then, the Western S units are going to go. Is this guy disrupted? Nah. Since we won't disrupt anymore, we'll just go here and here and here and here. These guys can all. This guy will move in here. This guy will move back. Um, this guy will move there, there. One, two, three, four. Let's get rid of these grand ones here. And then this guy will go here. We'll move here, and we'll move here, here. One, two, three, four. There. Okay. Anybody else? Nope. That's it. Okay. Uh, let's see. We're going to fire. So let's start firing. We're going to try to fire at the beast. Now, the beast has a... What is the beast of Mordor? He has a morale of X, uh, armor of 4. Okay. Morale of X, armor of 4. So let's start firing at him here. So we're going to fire here at... E, uh, two, four, five to six. Doesn't make it. Okay, this guy's, he's already engaged. Oh, this guy's going to try. So he's going a D to three, and that would be D three to six to eight. Nine, nope, okay. This guy's going to go D three, eight. Let's see. That is one, and let's see, we need a casualty. So Y here, casualty with a three, Y three, one half eliminated. Oops, he's not disrupted. He's just half eliminated. Flip, and that unfortunately sets the beast back. Okay, let's see, elves can fire three, so we will... Again, fire at this guy. He's now at a Z, so we're going to go a D2 with a 5. D2, 5, that's enough. Um, he's now at a Z, and we get a 1, so that eliminates this guy. Okay, this guy's firing on... We'll fire here on this Y, but we have an E3. E3 with a 9. E3 with a 9 is nothing. Okay, here we have an E3 with a 3. That is something. And with a 1 with a Y. 1 Y is an elimination. Okay, any more? Okay, here we've got a D1. D1 with a 5. D1 with a 5 is a nothing. And it's a Z with a 6, so he retreats 1. Okay, and then here D with a 9. D with a 9 against a 1 is a nothing. Okay, that was it, that's it, that's it, everybody else. Okay, now Sirdan is going to go against the, uh, in leader combat, uh, combat against Gorgal. So it's a 6. We're going to say he's got his spear, so 7 to 2. Is a plus five. We roll a one. Nothing. Okay. Now then, we can go to our. That's it for our leaders. Next, we go with our uh, melee, and we've got a D three. D to three. Six to eight. Six. Okay. So this guy is a Y. We roll a 5Y, retreat 2, 1, 2, and we will move in. Okay, he's disrupted. Here we've got a D2, a D3 with a 5, D3, 5, not nothing. Here we've got a D3, 
seven. Oh, wait, that was a seven. D3, that was a seven, so that is, yeah, that is a hit. Uh, let's go with a Y5 is a retreat two. Okay, and then this guy can go with a D1. D1 is a two to seven with a seven, okay. And a Z2, that's going to be the slave unit is gone. We will move in. Isildur is going to go with a D3 with a four. D3 with a four is not enough. Okay. We're going to have these elves go with a D3 with a seven. That is. And Y2. Y2 is elimination. We'll move in. Okay. Here we've got a B. These actually fight as an A2. And that's a miss. Okay, we've got a B2. That's a 7. That is enough. And it, that's going to, no matter what, that'll push him out. Okay, now we have a B3 with a 9. Nothing. Okay. Here we've got an A. We'll go against that guy. A3 with a 7. A3, 7. That's enough. And he's a Y. So no matter what, he's going to retreat, and that'll, he can't doesn't have anywhere to retreat to, so he's gone. Finally, we've got a B3 with a 7. B3 with a 7 is a hit, and a 1 is an elimination, so no matter what. Actually, it was an X, but he's a Z, so. Okay, and that is it. Now, that's it for the Western S turn. Disruptions. Uh, I guess this guy can see if he can uh, Undisrupt. Let's see. He's a six. He doesn't make it. Okay. And Soren can try to undisrupt this guy, which automatic. It's automatic. So there. And the rate. Oh no, he's in combat. Okay. That leaves us open to the breath weapon of doom. And the beast is going to use his breath weapon. Let's see. And it's the it's two ahead. It's a two. It's a triangle. A three by three triangle. Hmm. Let me see here. Three by three triangle. So one, two, three. One. He could do it here with these guys. So basically, this guy's gone. Everybody's gone, and he does that. Okay. Then Sauron's going to attack, and I mean, I'm not sure whether Sauron could use other spells or not. It's hard to say. Can he use a second spell and control the beast? I guess he's controlling the beast, so he can't do anything else. Okay. These guys get to go. Um, he'll go, he'll go. Not many units left. Okay. Okay, that's about all. Um, that's it for his movement. Um, and this was actually game turn 18. We're at the last game turn of the game. So E to 2. Uh, 4. E to 4. Nothing. Okay. Here we've got E4, 11, nothing. D4, 7. D4, 7 should do it. D, he's got a 4 and a 7. No, 2 to 5, okay. D3, or D4, with a 7, nothing. Okay, here we've got an E4, with an 8, nothing. And a D4 with a 5. That will do something. So this D unit, um, it's a, our W unit. It's on, on morale 3. So retreat by 2. 1, 2. Okay. Now this A unit is going to go against a 4. We need the 4 to 7. Got it. Okay. And we roll on a W3, R2. So these guys are sent back. Whoop. 
Actually, you'd have to go here. Couldn't go there because it's in a... I, well, these have, they have no zone of control, but that's a better one anyway. Okay. Everybody else is disrupted. Okay, now the beast can go. Um, I don't know. There's not much I can do as a beast. Um, I need to be next to somebody, so I can't really do anything. Okay. And then the final, the Western S units. Um, we will just charge in. Guns a-blazing. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. That's what I can do. Okay, let's start with our, our shooting E3. Let's go with the three. E3 with a seven. E3 with a seven is a miss. Okay. This guy can go D3 with a seven. That is a hit, and it's a four. This guy's a Y4. Goes back to one. Can't go back there. Can't go there. Oh, he's disrupted. He can't. He can't uh, retreat. So he's gone. Oh, that's a fire. Okay. And then let's start going. Out. Just go down the line here. Don't try to take Gorgol. Yeah, Sirdan's going to try Gorgol again. And we get a. We roll a three. It's a D one half E, so that would eliminate Gorgol since he's already been halved. And this guy has to move back. Actually, he doesn't. I don't think. Well, I'm not. He does, I think. Okay. Now, this guy can still. I think I'm going to let him still attack. Um, let's go down with old Sauron here. So, B. So, that's an A3. With a reroll of five, a three with a five. So this guy is hit. This Y is hit with a two, which eliminates him. So basically, Sauron has to retreat to the nearest friendly, which I guess will be him. But he loses his Ottoman. So they automatically win. The Westerners wins for taking his footstool. Okay, but um, now then, this guy's going to go D to A, to 1, D1, 2 to 10, 8, okay, and it's a Z, so 6, he can't retreat, so again, Sauron loses his guy, I guess he can go with his wraiths over here, so there's that, okay, now let's move on down, now let's move out this way, this guy's gone, okay, these guys have gone, D3, let's go with the Y, 10, nothing, okay. Here we've got a D3, but he's actually going to be a D3 with a 7. Let's see, D3 with a 7. D3 with a 7 is a hit, okay. But he's uphill, so he's a 4. D4 with a 7, so no, that's not a hit. Okay, this is going to do the same thing. D4 with a 6. D4, 6, no, okay. Can't do anything. D3 with a 7. D3 with a 7. That's a hit. And a 3. This is against a Y3. One half eliminated. Um, let's see. He's just flipped and he can, has to retreat. Okay, not disrupted. That's all those guys. Now down here, I got a B3. B3 with a 7. That's a hit. And a 3 against a X3. Half eliminated. Oh, that's, that was, these guys were already halved. So these trolls are gone. So again, Sauron, I guess, goes over here. Wraths, wraiths, wraths go over there. And that is the end. There you go. That's Sauron. Um, yeah, it's a mess. I think this game really could have used a lot better rule system. Um, in some ways, it reminds me a little bit of S&P's 
medieval quad games. They they left a lot of holes in the rules. I, in fact, I was going to sit down and do those as videos, and then I got to playing them, and, oh, man, the Arthur one is the worst. Uh, this is better than that. I think it has some neat little concepts. I do like this uh, casualty probability table and casualty results table. I think they're on to something with that. For, for ancient battles, this might be a kind of a neat thing to do, because, again, you can take in to affect attack values, armor values, and morale, and do all three of those together. So I think there's some value to that. But implementation of this game is way off, and it's way out of balance. Um, so anyway, if you want to tinker with it, I think it'd be a fun game to tinker with. That's what I got this week. Uh, next week, I'm going to use the same system, and we are going to try out Gondor, which is uh, the Siege of Minas Tirith. We'll see how that one goes. And then I think I will end up doing the... Um, Helm's Deep game and see how that goes. So maybe this system will work a little better with those. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.